Good morning, Floss Tube. Welcome back. I'm Misty. Thanks for joining me. Today is Friday, May 11th, um, but I'll be posting this for you on Saturday. Hope that you've had a great couple of weeks. It feels like it's been about three weeks because uh, I've just been doing so much stuff since I last saw you. I hope I remember it all. I wrote things down. I'll probably forget something that I wanted to share. So we'll, we'll see how it goes today. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming by. If this is your first time, thanks for coming back if you've been here before. Uh, I really look forward to hanging out with you every couple of weeks. And um, I really appreciate all of the comments that people leave. Uh, it's so fun to have um, connection with people that way. And I really enjoy hearing about how you're doing and sharing with you what I've been doing. Um, and this is just such a great community. Um, okay, so I had an awesome birthday. Thank you to all of you who um, wished me a happy birthday. It was a great day and I kind of just did what I wanted and relaxed and stitched and it was it was just a really great day. So um, yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm still kind of celebrating. <laughs> Um, okay, so shout outs. I've been watching a lot of floss tube. I can't even shout out everyone, but I'm gonna, how many do I have here? Five, six people? Lots of shout outs. So, um, people I've been watching lately, Amy Loves Toads. Uh, she has so many great projects. I love what she's working on, and I especially love her, um, year at Hawk Run Hollow. Um, I've been watching those Hawk Run Hollows for years, and uh, I did eventually buy the Christmas one. I've not stitched it yet, um, but I pretty much like every single Hawk Run Hollow that I see. Um, she just finished um, an Air Force piece that's incredible, and her husband put uh, helped with the framing and, and created some planes out of metal, I think, and... and she put them on the frame or he put them on the frame anyway it's amazing you should check it out if you haven't um, seen her videos um i love the charlie harper uh pattern that she got uh, with the cardinals charlie harper cardinals are awesome and then i watched cheryl mckinney um she recently finished um a welcome sign that she stitched and then she mounted it looks really cute uh, I like a lot of her projects, and um, I mentioned I want to mention specifically the Bent Creek Snow piece is so cute. So that's one that I think should go on my wish list for someday. Um, also, she's doing the map of Hawk Run Hollow, which that one is maybe my favorite of all the ones that I've seen. Um, I might also have to go on my to stitch list and then she had a Rosewood Manor. I think it's called inspiration piece. It's just gorgeous. That would be another I don't know if I have the stamina to stitch that but it's awesome. So um, I believe Cheryl and Amy are going to do a Hawk Run Hollow stitch along in the fall. I'm contemplating joining in because why not have multiple epic pieces going on simultaneously. <laughs> I'm contemplating. My, my ideas are evolving. I'm not committing to anything yet, but there's a chance that I might. Or maybe I would just stitch like one thing from my Christmas Hawk Run Hollow. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Um, Jeannie Swartz, uh, she is doing all kinds of cool stuff. I was watching her most recent video and um, she had like a lot of kind of smaller projects, which I think would be a good way to do mania. And she's also doing the wordplay stitch along. Um, that uh, Jamie and Jordan are doing from Basic Stitches, and I'm not sure, there might be someone else who's doing it as well. Uh, I think I might join in. I have the April wordplay, um, and I'd like to get the January, so I might join in on those months, uh, but I really enjoyed her videos as well. Um, Jackie from Cross My Stitches, she makes all the project bags, and they're all awesome, so I might have to actually try to make a project bag. I've worked with vinyl before, in knitting project bags. I just haven't made a cross stitch project bag before and hers were all really cool. Um, yeah, she has a lot of cool plans for Mania. She was really enjoyable to watch, so check her out if you haven't. Um, this morning I just found Jen of Cider House Crafts and um, she's a multi-crafter and um, she loves Halloween and I love that too. So Jen, you're awesome. 
I, I like I loved all your projects and uh, I hope you make more videos so she has a uh, one video up and then I think she also has a knitting video which I didn't get a chance to watch so she, I think she has one cross stitch and one one knitting um, and lastly um, I know and these aren't all like new people just that I haven't necessarily watched them or I've been watching them more recently um, Christine from Stitch All The Things. She's been around and making plenty of videos, uh, but I just hadn't watched, so I got a chance to watch some of her videos, and she's really sweet and enthusiastic about what she's doing. Um, I watched her interview with Gerald. Uh, that was really interesting, too. So, um, lots of great floss tube videos out there, and probably you've already been checking them out, but if you haven't, please do, and I will link to each one, um, below the video. Um, <clears throat> other kind of news, there's some new Stitch With Me videos out, too, that I've been watching. Um, Cindy from Cindy's Cross Stitch. I love listening to Cindy talk, and she's so soothing, and i just really been enjoying stitching with her. Um, so if you want to stitch with someone, Cindy would be a good person, and Jan Hicks, she's doing um, a video more or less every day for Mania, and I've really been enjoying um, one, seeing what she's working on, because she's working on tons of cool stuff, and two, just learning more about Jan, and, um, I'm looking forward to meeting Jan. Uh, so that leads me to, um, tomorrow I will be going to Lancaster, and I'll be meeting up with, uh, Jan Hicks and Liz and Deb from Country Stitchers, and we're going to meet at Stitches Unlimited there. So I'm really looking forward to meeting all of them. I think that'll be really fun. Um, I'm going to call this, I always say like, thank you for things. I'm going to call this like gratitudes. So um, people mentioned me. They were kind enough to mention me in their videos. Um, Lori Mischievous Stitches mentioned that she listens to me while she's driving. Oh, thank you. Uh, I love watching Lori's videos. She just does the most amazing projects. And everything that she stitches, then I want to stitch too. Especially that pink uh, sparrow. Man, it's amazing. Um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy mentioned me. She gave me a super kind shout out. Thank you so much. I love how enthusiastic Michelle is. And I love that she's suddenly become addicted to samplers. I feel like that's like the same thing that's happened to me. Like I've liked samplers before, but I feel like recently I've really come to appreciate them. And I'm feeling very enthusiastic about them as well. So I think uh, we share that in common. And Whenever Michelle says flipping, I love that. Um, and then Michelle Farm Girl mentioned me. Um, she was talking about um, a buck that she bought and um, his lineage and that I happened to be at a goat show where, um, I don't know if it was the parent, the sire, dam, the dam, grand dam, I don't remember, of the buck she bought. Um, that that doe had won at that show. Um, and so I was there with my mom, but we were watching the Nubians because my mom has Nubians. So I don't know if you watched Michelle's video and if you understood any of that goat language, but I did understand it all. <laughs> um, other gratitudes, I received stitchy kindness. So um, I received uh, birthday gifts and some stitchy kindness in the form of uh, passing the stash. So um, Sue Susie Reno, she sent me some wonderful birthday gifts. So thank you so much and I love them. So I'll show you what she sent me. I don't have everything and I hope I'm not forgetting anything because I, I didn't like wait. I just like distributed it into what I was doing immediately. So she sent me an amusing card. Made me what I call a bitty buddy. Can you believe that she made this? Isn't this awesome? And then this little elastic can kind of crush this down and then hold it in place. And then this is like a little hanging tab out of twill tape. So this is awesome. You're amazing. This is what, so this is called a bitty, what I call a bitty buddy because <clears throat> I have the bitty buddy. This is what I use for quilting. And you can see there's the elastic there, which you can use to hang or to keep it closed, although my elastic is dead. So I use this especially like on retreats, but actually I use it all over my house, like for weaving or wherever I am. So I was psyched to get a wee bitty buddy and I've been keeping it 
um, with my stitching stuff and then putting my warts, as I think they are called, in here. I don't really get warts, but uh, I just throw them away. Sorry. <laughs> but this is awesome. She got me this cool um, seam ripper that I don't quite understand. I did try to read the directions, but at the time I needed to rip the seam right then, so I was just like, okay, I just have to use the basic seam ripper and come back to this. But it's got this, like, blade. This is serious stuff here, and I need to learn how to use it. Thank you for the awesome gadget. And then this is a little thing that you um, can rub along your, um, after you pull out your stitches, it kind of pulls the, the threads out of the fabric. So thank you. And then this is awesome because we are twin sewing machine people. So she gave me a needle minder. Yes, my power tool. Okay, and then she sent me a little tube to hold my needles. Makes me feel like a little bit of a scientist with this. I don't know, like a test tube. And then um, some of the awesome clips. I love these clips. I didn't have the bigger size, so that's awesome because I only have like the little ones and then they're all different colors. Um, okay. Oh, and I also received fabric from Susie, which I immediately incorporated into Halo. And she sent me... Um, some candy which was really good. I had to share a little bit of it with a friend because it was like a whole bag but it was delicious. It was like sweet but not too sweet and it was like a, a coconut candy. It was really good. So thank you. Um, and then Jen, she's Spoonaroonie Stitcher on Instagram. She'd already sent me those awesome like Margaret Sherry things and then and she just had a birthday on April 24th and so then she sent me something for my birthday again. So she passed some stash and then sent me a birthday gift. So thank you, Jen, for being doubly generous. So she sent me a nice card. And then she, um, I commented on, um, her needle minder. This is what she was using. And I've always liked this saying, and I remember first seeing it when I was in college on um, someone's bumper sticker, and I've always thought it was true. So I was commenting on it, and she sent this to me. So I've been enjoying this as well. So now I've got like three needle minders. I went from having one for all these years, now I have three. And then she sent me these really pretty skeins of pearl cotton, which are awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. And lastly, Betty Ulan is super generous and she passed the stash and she sent me a loner chart. So thank you so much, Betty. And um, she does not have a floss tube channel, but she is on Instagram. Um, she did my birthday start with me. She's doing mania. She's got all these cool projects. I'm gonna put her um, Instagram name so that you can check her out. And she's just so sweet and uh, definitely has a sense of humor. So she sent me this cute card and she is loaning me where there are bees. So I'll be starting this soon. I was just debating about um, if I'm still gonna use the same linen, I think I am, as what I did for Rabbit Run so that they can be companion pieces. So I need to order that. Uh, but I'm hoping to start this in June. And I really appreciate her forwarding this to me to borrow for a little while. And it is so, so pretty. So I'm really excited to start this. And then the rest she sent to me just as a gift. And holy cow, she sent me two packages. I'm feeling very, very thankful. So some of the Prairie Schooler Santas, and I, I didn't have these, so any of those, these guys, and I love them. <clears throat> and I especially had been wanting this one because of the knitting. So that was especially awesome. And I have a few of the mini cards, but I didn't have any of these.
in one of the kits. I don't have any of the kits. And I do have a few mill hills. This is so cute. I've not tried them yet, but now I'm even more eager to do so. Oh, here's another Santa that escaped. So my prairie schooler stash is just getting extremely awesome. And I was watching one of Jan Hicks videos and she enabled me to buy the um, X stitch app. So I, I have followed what she was doing as to how she was categorizing. And I put all of my prairie schooler patterns in the app. And then I put the design size of everything in the app with the chart so that whenever I'm out, if I'm looking for something, I can decide how much fabric I need if I see something. Ugh. Halloween. Oh my god. It's the best. So thanks Jan for enabling me to buy something else. I'm really glad I already own the Knit Companion app that she's going to be demoing later. <laughs> I've already been enabled with that one. Oh, Cricut Collection! Um, so whenever she comes out with that video, I'm ready. I need to learn how to use it for knitting and, and cross stitch. So cool. And then we've got the wee birds. I do love my seasonal stuff. So can you believe she sent me all this? Thank you so much, buddy. I love it all. I'm so grateful. And I also really appreciate that you told me how to pronounce your last name. I'm always uncertain and I like to pronounce people's names correctly if I can. So I, uh, I appreciate that. Okay, so that was all so awesome and I'm so grateful for all of the kindness, all of the, the kind words that I've received lately, the kind comments, the kind gifts. It's just like such an incredible community and even getting to meet up with people like there, I, so I have a couple of friends that sporadically stitch, but one just moved away. The other one hasn't stitched in a while, so I don't really have like in-person stitchy friends. So it's pretty cool that I can go meet up with people who stitch and I'm really, really excited about that too. And all the connections I've made through Floss too with other stitchers and on Instagram, it's just totally awesome and it's an awesome community. So I feel so lucky. So what's next on the list? Oh, that I had a finish. Not that it's any surprise, because it was almost done. So Rabbit Run turned out awesome. And I was holding it off on framing it or doing anything with it because I wanted to wait for where there are bees. Um, I am thinking of framing both of them and hanging them up together. So I could probably start thinking about a frame um, now that I am able to stitch that. So I'll probably go to the frame shop pretty soon, see what they have for a color. Um, I think I would do the same frame for both. I'm, I'm undecided, but anyway, I think I already said this like probably a million times, but I'm really happy with the color changes I made and how bright it is. I think it's just totally awesome and I love it. And it was a really fun stitch. I don't wanna do lots of Quakers and samplers and all the things. You gotta stitch all the things. So that's really cool. I'm very pleased. So I finished that um, the day after the video. And then that left me free to start my birthday start, which I did. And when I said that this was epic, I did not even know what I meant by that. Like just how epic this would be. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if. If you're stitching along with me, what I may have gotten you into, 
I didn't even know what I was getting myself into. I mean, I did read it, but I just didn't understand the level of, like, you know, Susie warned me about the backstitch, or the, um, eyelets, but, you know, there's, like, tons of backstitching, which I sort of knew, but you really get it when you're actually doing the backstitching, just how much backstitching there is, and fractional stitches. So, I read this chart, and it says, um, The quilt squares are designed to look like small pieces of fabric. Please use compensational stitches for filling to the back stitch lines. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, all right, I get that. And I see fractional stitches on the chart, and I'm like, yeah, I can do that. What I, I didn't realize was that the fractional stitches she's talking about that you need to fill into the back stitch lines aren't charted. I mean, there's just like empty partial squares and then when she charts the fractional stitches, that's because there's not back stitching. It's like lining up to another fractional stitch. So as I finished, as I thought I was done with Delaware, I'm like looking at my square thinking, boy, I feel like it doesn't look the same. And then I realized it doesn't look the same because I hadn't filled that little bit in. Um, and that's what she meant, and it just didn't sink in. Like, I read, but I just didn't get what she meant. So, right as I was about to put a, post a picture on Instagram, like, hey, I finished Delaware, I was like, I'm not done with Delaware. I have a lot of fractional stitches on Delaware to do. Which started out kind of painful. I mean, I've done fractional stitches before, uh, but it was just a little painful. But then you just kind of get desensitized to all of the fractional stitches after you've done, like, one million of them. And already between Delaware and Pennsylvania, I have done one million of them. So without further ado, I will show you where I'm at. So um, this is stitched on 40 count, soft ivory, I think it was. Um, I've got it on the scroll rod and I'm stitching it on my stand. I'm enjoying using the stand. So the blues that I'm using are brighter colors than what were called for originally. So the blue is like a brighter, darker blue, the, the darkest blue. And then the medium blue that you're seeing in Pennsylvania around here. Um, I also had subbed that. I actually subbed all the blues and two of the greens. So um, this is an intense stitch, like more than even I imagined, but... I am actually really enjoying it and it's so beautiful and it is going to be amazing when it's done. So I'm really excited about it. Um, I had initially thought this would take me a year and I actually thought that the quilt squares would be fast and now I think they're going to be the slowest part. Uh, and I think I should multiply my time frame by like three. So I think in three years, if I'm lucky, I will have this done. And I started a um, Smarty Pig goal. So I don't know if you know what Smarty Pig is, but it's like um, a way to help you save up for things. It's a site. And they have like a little better interest rate than your bank or credit union usually does for your account. And then you can set it up to, you know, contribute whenever you want or you can contribute monthly. So for the past, I don't know, three or four years or whatever, whenever I wanted to save up for something important, I start a Smarty Pig goal. So I started a Smarty Pig goal for this of $10 a month. By the time I'm done, I will have plenty of money to frame this, I think. So that's what I'm doing. It's awesome. So if you're stitching along, um, I know Betty Ulan is, uh, Susie Reno is stitching along, and there were a few other people who mentioned that they uh, would like to join in. So if you're stitching along, um, you can tag it with, uh, what did I say it was, American AF, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll put it here, <laughs> I can't remember, um, but hashtag it, and if you aren't on social media, but you're working on it, and you want to share it, feel free to email me, misty at luminousfiberarts.com, you can email me a picture, I'll share it in the video, and everybody else can see what you're working on, so if you're joining in, I'd love to see a picture, and I'd love to share it with everybody else, so, um, Okay, so I said that I was not going to do Stitch Mania. But I was feeling like I wanted to do something. I was feeling a little left out, as I said before. And 
I couldn't start that many projects because I would just lose my mind. <clears throat> and I was watching Caroline off the grid needle arts talking about doing a whip mania and I was like, oh, maybe I could do that. So that's what I decided to do. I have probably around 22 at this point whips slash UFOs on a list. And um, so I decided that there <coughs> were about 15 that I could deal with during something like this. There's some that need direction. I just have to think about them a while. They're usually quilts. And that's what I have like the most of that need finishing. Um, so anyway, I decided to do whip mania and I took 15 projects and I wrote each of them down on a piece of paper and threw them in a bag. And then for the other three days, since stitch mania is theoretically 18 days this, this year, um, for the other three days, I wrote crafter's choice. Like I could just pick whatever I wanted. Um, so I decided to do that. And then starting May 1st, I drew a project from the bag and worked on it. So I'm going to talk about what I did, what day, how it went, and you can just see. So May 1st, I drew a scarf. So I kind of luckily eased into it. This was like a really easy scarf. Um, it's called the Rossani Bias Scarf. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. I used the Rossani Silk Yarn. So that was my first time working with silk only yarn. And um, I'll insert a picture here of where it was. And um, it twists up a lot, so it was a little bit challenging to work with and it slipped around a lot on the needles. So I think I use um, Addy Turbos. Um, and I think, I don't own bamboo needles, but I think it would have been easier to knit on bamboo. But I usually prefer the Addy Turbos. So that's what I did on day one. I moved that along and then I took it with me um, and kind of kept working on it the next day and pushed it through. So, okay, so day two, I drew the Halloween mystery quilt and I'll just show it to you now. Isn't this awesome? So, this was designed by my friend Cynthia, who owns Stitch Your Art Out, and it was either a Halloween or a Christmas mystery, so you could pick your fabrics for either. I chose Halloween. By the time I chose my fabrics, I already knew um, <clears throat> what it was going to look like, so I chose some of these large scale Halloween prints um, because that would be a good way to show them off. And um, I started this brilliantly in the middle of fancy forest because <laughs> why not start one more thing and um but this went together pretty easily so I, I had like a chunk of it done and then I went back to working on fancy forest and then last year last summer after I finished fancy like piecing fancy forest then I came back to this and got the top piece and then the like around Christmas I took this to the long arm quilter had it quilted and then I just needed to bind it so my project for day two was to cut the binding, start sewing it on. So I sew it on by machine to the front, <clears throat> and then I'm stitching it the back by hand. And isn't my backing fabric awesome? Flannel? It's going to be so cozy. I love this. This is a Riley Blake flannel. Like, Riley Blake. Hard to say, though. Um, one of the things I really love about this quilt is this border really makes it. And I think, if I remember correctly... What happened with Cynthia is that she actually ran out of a fabric she needed and she needed to come up with some way to something to do with the design so that she had enough fabric and so that's what she came up with sometimes especially with quilting stuff going wrong is actually a really really good thing for your design um so I love this it's almost done I just need to I've got one side bound I need to bind the other three sides um it shouldn't take that long I've just been kind of lazy about it mentioned that's a throw size quilt. When I finish it I'll get a picture of the whole thing or I'll video the whole thing so that you can see what the whole quilt looks like. Okay so day three I drew the dolphin shawl and this is <clears throat> from one of the Barocco books but you can buy the individual pattern on Ravelry. Um, this is designed by Yarniad or um, Hillary Smith Callie, I think is how you say her last name. 
So this is for my mom. She picked this out. And this is the yarn she chose. It's the called for yarn. It's um, Barocco Modern Cotton DK. So it's a DK weight yarn. And this is where it was after I worked on it. So it's going to be a really pretty shawl. And this will obviously open up a bit more once it's blocked. Um, this takes at least one and a half, two skeins. I've got two skeins of yarn for it. That's what it calls for. Um, this has had a couple false starts. Like I started it and I made a mistake. I didn't notice somehow that this was garter and I was knitting it and doing stock in it. So I had to rip it out. And then um, I restarted it and I noticed a couple of places where I'd made mistakes. And you know, sometimes when you make a mistake in lace knitting, you can just kind of pull up a bar and fudge it. Not on this. Like if everything is not uniform, it's really obvious. So I had to go back several rows one night and, you know, redo those. So now I just know that if I screw up and I forget a yarn over, I have to fix it right then because you can't hide it on this particular project, unfortunately. This is a really nice cotton, really soft. Um, it's a, a bit splitty, but you know, whatever. It's still a really nice cotton. Cotton tends to be a bit splitty anyway. Um, I'm knitting this on, I think, size four needle. So, um, this is pretty interesting to knit just because you've got the lace, um, but it's not like so hard that, uh, you can't do it. You know, like I can be social and work on this. I can take it places. So it's kind of a nice mix of interesting, but not hard. Um, I'm just not very knitting motivated and definitely not like larger project knitting motivated right now, which is probably why I've been knitting small stuff. Um, so this will get done eventually for my mom, but who can say when? So for day four of Whip Mania, I was supposed to work on my felt French hen, but I was traveling. So I decided to take the Rossani scarf with me and see if I could finish it up. And I did. So, so far... That's at least one finish. And it turned out just amazing after I blocked it. <clears throat> so here it is, all finished. This was the project from day one. And it's just awesome. So, yeah, it's really cool. Um, and just, yeah, it blocked out amazing. So I read up, I had not um, knitted with all silk before. I've only used like silk blends. Uh, so I looked up how to block it and read that you should <clears throat> not like submerge it, but just um, kind of moisten it. So I blocked it out with my blocking pins and wires and then I spritzed it and that worked great. So it's lovely. Actually, it feels really incredible. I kind of want to wear it now. So maybe I'll just leave it on. Why not? Okay. This is gonna be fun. Um, so I'm really pleased with it. It's awesome. Thank goodness it's done. <laughs> or, you know, I am taking it off though. It's a little warm for this, even if it is just a lightweight silk, but man, can you believe? Ah, oh, it's just amazing. Okay, yeah, so I'm thrilled. And I'm thrilled that it's done because that's one less thing on the, the to-do list. Okay, um, that was day four. So day four was a good day for me. Day five, and I don't have to cut out yet because these are here. So day five, I finished weaving my towels and finished hemming them and washing them and they were finally done. And this is what it looks like. So the back side's the opposite. <clears throat> like where there was white on the front, there's red on the back, and vice versa. So these turn out really nice. I have one left, which is this red one. So if you'd like to purchase the red one, you can just contact me um, through YouTube or my email, uh, misty at luminousfiberarts.com. If you want to comment on the video, you can. Um, the towel is $30 plus shipping. I've been doing the priority mail shipping, which is $6.50, but if you want to just do first class with tracking, you can let me know, and I can tell you, um, you know, I can give you the shipping, or I can PayPal you the shipping for first class. It's up to you. 
I just like to have the insurance in case something happens to it. Um, cause it's not easy for me to replace a towel. Uh, if something were to happen to it in transit. Okay. So anyway, that was awesome. I love this batch of towels and, um, I've got yarn on order to do a new batch. So I'm excited about that. Um, getting ready to set up an Etsy shop. So that should be happening soon. And then I'll just post towels, um, there in the future. Um, hopefully soon, but I have to weave them first. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I also that day worked on and finished, actually I finished this the next day, technically a tiny Norwegian mitten. So this is part of my Wee Winter Woolens knit along that I started last uh, June. So I need to knit another one of these and then move on to whatever next thing I'm going to stitch or knit in this uh, series. This was like at least half the time it needed to take to do a sweater. And I was like, thank goodness I've moved on to the faster things now. Like a few hours. <sighs> thank goodness. That was easy. Um... Okay, so day six, I skipped this, so I just couldn't face it. <clears throat> um, this is a scarf I started probably two or three years ago, possibly three, and it's called Not a Drop. And I found this scarf, um, there's a person on Ravelry that I follow. Her name's Nora something or other with a number after it. <clears throat> I'll, I'll link her in case you want to check her out if you're a knitter. But she does like everything that I am doing or would ever want to do. So I had seen this on her um, project pack and, and not just knitting but weaving also. And then she photographs it beautifully. She's just amazing. So anyway, I saw her not a drop scarf. It's called not a drop because it looks like it's a drop stitch, but it's actually not a drop stitch. And this lighting is not too accurate. It's not as blue. It's actually like a purple. This is called Spectrum. It's from Madeline Tosh. It's Tosh Marina Light. And so it's got, you know, rainbow colors. That's kind of, yeah, that's pretty accurate. It's, it's still a little bit more purple than I think what you can tell here. So you can see there's this end and then all the drops. And I'm actually probably, I don't know, close to halfway maybe. The problem with this is that it's hard <laughs> knitting. I mean, there's like, I don't even know how many pages of instructions, six, seven pages of instructions to accomplish this. <clears throat> and I'd started it once and she actually recommends that you, um, practice knitting this with some other yarn, which at first I'm like, I don't need to do that. I've been knitting for like a decade, but then I did. And it was good that I, I did that because I had a really hard time until I figured out what she was telling me to do. Anyway, <clears throat> this is one of those projects where when you walk away from it and then you want to come back to it, you have to like really reorient yourself. So I've walked away from it a couple of times and had to reorient myself and it does get a little easier, but it's also hard lace knitting. I can't be around other people when I'm working on it. I can't watch TV. I can maybe listen to something. I can't watch TV. So it's just not um, a practical project although it's beautiful which is the only thing that saved it from being frogged its beauty is what's saving it because it's just like not exactly fun to knit even though it's amazing maybe so I'm not like giving up on this but I just need to like put it back into hibernation for right now because I'm just not in the mindset when I have more knitting mojo whenever that happens then I can come back to it and reassess what to do but right now I was just like mm, nope <laughs> So I skipped this and just worked on other whips that I felt like working on. Um, <clears throat> so day seven was crafter's choice and I cut out um, a halo block and I worked more on my American flag quilt sampler. Day eight, I actually drew halo and I 
finish the two blocks here that are part of row eight, and I'll insert a picture here. And so now I have to do eight blocks of row nine, and then that's the body of the quilt, and I can start the border after that. And then I have 72 border blocks to do, but they're easier. They're just um, like, a like a square with a quarter circle in them. So I don't have to do the square and a square and everything else. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see how that goes, but it's getting awesome that I'm so close to finishing. Well, close to finishing. Um, and I just love it. And so some of the fabrics that uh, Susie Reno gifted to me are in there. Um, and then um, some other friends gifted me some fabrics from their stash when I was at the retreat to contribute to my quilt. So I have um, some other new fabrics going in, so that's been pretty fun. Um, day nine. I was supposed to work on another quilt that I had quilted that needed to be bound, but I need um, a big space to cut off the backing and excess batting, so I'm going to wait until next Tuesday when I'm working at um, my local quilt shop. I'll just go in early and, you know, there's big tables in the middle of the room and I can just cut and climb on the tables however I need to to cut the, the excess backing and batting off. So Tuesday, I'll work on Fractured and I'll um, pick a binding. So instead of doing that, I decided to start something new. <laughs> Because I felt like, well, we're halfway through Mania and I deserve a reward, darn it. So, yeah. So, I treated myself to American Eagle, which is, as I mentioned, has long been on my wish list. This is by Blackbird Designs and it's from the book Sweet Land of Liberty. And I'm stitching it on 32 count weeks Confederate Gray. I'm using most of the called for Whereas I'm using some DMC, the Weeks, and some of the Gentle Arts threads. So I've got America stitched. So this in the star and then in the flag is going to be red, but it's just looking very pink to me. So that's old red paint, but it's looking more pink than red, and I think it needs to be a little bit more red. So, um... When I go to Stitches Unlimited tomorrow, I'm going to see if I can find something a little bit redder to use for the rest of the piece. <clears throat> but I'm enjoying this. It's very easy. It's quite weird to go from stitching on a 40 count to a 32 count, changing needles, one thread to two. It's very different. Um, but it's kind of a cool transition. So really enjoying this, and um, uh, I'm excited to be working on it. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> day 10, I just kept working on this uh, Blackbird design piece and my flag piece, and that's as far as we made it. So, what do I think of all this? Um, it's been good. It's been kind of painful in a way. Um, why? I think because it's forcing me to... So... Things that I have that have not been getting time. Some things it was kind of a simple thing, like it just needs binding and binding isn't my favorite thing. Um, some of the other things, like the not a drop scarf, they're just stuck because like I'm not in the mood to work on them right now. Or some things are stuck because like there's a problem with them that needs to be dealt with. And to deal with 15 problematic things <laughs> And like two weeks is a lot. Um, so, you know, I don't know if I'm going to revise this for the rest of Whip, Whip Mania or what exactly I'm going to do. I feel like what would have been a more... It doesn't feel fun the entire time. It feels like I'm doing a job on my summer break. Um, some of it has been fun. Finishing is definitely fun. But sometimes I just want to keep stitching the stuff I started and not like pounding away at these other things. So I think what would have been more fun would have been to have picked like four things to start that were new and intersperse a few things that I wanted to move along in between. Um, 
<clears throat> and the other thing that I've heard people mention, it's also true for this, is sometimes like if I get in a groove on one of these things, like I want to keep going on it and not rotate to something else. So like probably it would have been better to just spend four days like binding the Halloween quilt. Like I do one side a day and I just keep doing that rather than picking up another whip or, you know, however many other whips I was rotating. So that's my observation so far is uh, it's been a lot of work and not as much fun as I think everybody else seems to be having. Um, that's okay, but I just don't want it to be like not fun or, or feel like it's my job. So, and I do tend to make, make things into work. So that's, that's something I'm pondering right now. Are you someone who tends to make things into work? Is this a, is this a misty only problem? Um, I received some birthday haul and I got a little bit of stash enhancement that I acquired myself. So I'm going to share that with you next. So I received from my boyfriend some awesome birthday gifts, which I pre-selected for him from 123 Stitch and sent him a wish list. Uh, so I got the Star Detailer and the snag nabbit and he was kind enough to you know humor me so from carriage house samplings christmas joyride isn't this so cute and whimsical love that and this is called justice for all by blackbird designs and i just kept looking at it i couldn't get it out of my head <clears throat> I'm thinking that what I might do when I eventually stitch this is take this part off, make it square, scoot the stars up a little bit off the eagle, maybe add some color, I don't know, but I think it would look cool just like that. So, but yeah, I just couldn't, I know it's kind of simple, but I just could not get this out of my head. And <clears throat> this has been on my wish list for a long time. Coverlit Christmas. This is weaving. This is Monk's Belt. It's awesome. So of course, I needed it. Who doesn't love birds of a feather? Isn't that so cute? This is called Mary Mary. No one will be surprised that the majority of my charts are Christmas and Halloween, right? Nope. And this was also long on my wish list, the Halloween Quaker by Leela Studio. Not sure if I'll stitch it on the called for fabric. I was looking at Haunted as a possible candidate. Um, I haven't seen it personally online, but that might happen. Not sure, but I love this so, so much. Look at that cat. <laughs> so, and those cats, they're everywhere. They're awesome. This is awesome. I'm going to love stitching that. And I, I see people stitching it for, for Stitch Mania and I'm like, ah, oh. had to have this awesomeness. Away we ride. Blackbird Designs. So gorgeous. Another one that I'm going to love stitching. And I think this house Kind of looks like the Weasley's house. I don't know if anybody else thinks so, but that's what it reminds me of. And I received Signs of Spring. Now, Betty Eulin had also sent this to me unknowingly, because I got this for my birthday and she'd sent it to me as well. So she said it was okay for me to pass the stash. So in my next video, I will be asking it, um, for comments and then I'll draw from the comments for someone to win this chart compliments of Betty so cute and I've decided that I need it all of the all of the samplers from Prairie Schooler I've got the spring and I've got summer and I'm gonna have to like come up with something to um, display them on so I can change them out. Awesome. So that's the reprint. And this one has been on my wish list for a while too. I see that there are some others, um, other seasons, like the Halloween one would be appealing as well. So I'm working on my patriotic stuff. And then I bought a few things. So I got from 
antique thimble in Lewisburg. Um, oh, and I have one other birthday chart that I uh, dropped there and I couldn't find anywhere I called. And they're like, yeah, we found your chart by the door. So they're mailing it to me. So I have one other really awesome birthday chart, which hopefully will be here today. So I'll have to show it to you next time. Um, but I picked up while I was there this 40 count espresso by R&R. &R. Mm, it smells kind of spicy and kind of like coffee. It's hard to tell. It's not exactly, that's pretty good. So anyway, I'm thinking I've been trying so hard not to get sucked into anything else, but Sally Spencer, I mean, just the words sooner begun, sooner done. I'm like, yes, I need that. And then the little bird at the top. So I just, I'm just not going to resist anymore. And I think I'm going to stitch it on this. I'm going to start looking for threads for it. And in the not distant future, I will start it. Perhaps as soon as I have the chart and the threads. Um, so then I can have more whips for, you know, next year's whip mania. Um, yeah, so I asked Jan if she could bring hers tomorrow so I could look at it. I think I want to swap out one or two of the colors. Um, and I don't have the chart yet, so I need to order the chart or buy it from Stitches Unlimited if they have it. So I bought this fabric, and like I said, I think this would work well for Sally Spencer. And I just, if you have a good phrase like that, and it's so true, sooner begun, sooner done, and you put a cute bird on it, or a goat. Goat pile. Oh my god, did you see that? from uh, Plum Street Samplers. I'm gonna be buying that, you know it, and stitching it for my mother. My mom's birthday's in September. This would be a good time to get it and start stitching. I also treated myself on eBay to a used copy of Bump in the Night because Halloween. And because Samplers, this is from Kingsland Traditions on Etsy. And she's awesome. She like must know my mailman and she packaged it with like a piece of cardboard inside so that when he stuck it in the mailbox and it wasn't actually bent at the angle. The thing he doesn't realize is that the opening that he has on his side is bigger than the opening on my end of the mailbox. So he has this nice square and he can stick it in but I have like the lock and I have this little frame around it so that I have to actually bend the chart to get it out. <laughs> so luckily, she obviously packaged this quite well because it's not bent. Um, I love this. I've been trying to look online. I've seen a few people stitching it in the Prairie Schooler Facebook group, but I don't know what fabric to use, but I think this is gonna be awesome. And I would maybe change some of these birds for some robins or bluebirds or something, but yeah, I love this. I feel like this needs to happen really soon, but you know. I can only do so many things at once. And I don't stitch that fast, so that really limits me. Um, I don't even know how long this video is. I was gonna add a little bit of weaving to the end. I'm sorry if it makes it really long. People have been asking me to show a video of my weaving. I spent like an hour trying to set up a tripod so that you could see the weaving better. Um, the video's not super long, I don't know, it's maybe five minutes. You get to watch me weave, then you get to watch me make a mistake and see how I unweave the mistake and then reweave. Um, so that's on here too. I'm sorry it's so long. Like I said, even though it's been two weeks, it feels like it's been three. In my life, it's been about three. Um, so I've added that on here as well. Um, this was kind of a way of doing a bit of a whip parade and I'll have to show the quilts like in my next video or the next one after that when um, it's not as long so that I don't make you watch this forever. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend, and um, I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. Take care. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Um, I had to move the camera around. I think I spent like an hour just trying to find a place to put it that it wasn't in my way, but that you could still see, um, which was surprisingly difficult because I need a lot of wingspan to weave, and my arms have to go out to the sides and up, so the camera was in the way pretty much everywhere. Um, so hopefully you can see okay. I'm testing out a new yarn to see if I want to um, work with it and um, 
I'm not sure what I think. It's the same weight of yarn, same kind of yarn, just a different company. I feel like I'm having to beat harder to get my squares square than I was before um, with my other yarns. So we'll see how it goes. You know, I've got one towel, so I'm testing out on my last towel this uh, new weft to see if uh, I'll go with it at some point or, or if I'm going to keep working with the yarn companies that I have been. And I'm kind of a slow weaver. Um, working on my technique, so I don't weave quickly. And I've got a little bubble there. I've got an end feed shuttle which I really like. That's what I'm throwing back and forth. And inside the shuttle is a pern, which is like a bobbin, except it doesn't spin, so it's called a pern instead. And feed shuttles are really nice to work with. And I have some regular shuttles where you just have a spinning bobbin. Um, and they're fine, but the ones I bought are actually hard to catch and throw because they're very long. So um, I made sure to buy a shorter shuttle so that I could actually catch and throw properly. So I'm making the pattern by changing which treadle I'm pushing with my foot. Mistake, so I gotta go back. So, hmm, this uh, last towel has been fraught with problems since I started it. It's like starting a new yarn somehow made me flub it up, or maybe knowing that I was gonna have to try and record this. I don't know, weaving on a video is hard, harder than talking about my cross stitch in a floss tube, anyway. So, somewhere I missed treadling correctly, so to unweave, I have to go backward and pull out my yarn. And I've had to do this on, on just this one, like the other towels have been great, but this one towel, I've had to do this like one million times. Hmm. So the way I'm finding which treadle, if I lose track, is I watch to see when all the same threads lift up that are catching this one. Okay. So it looks like I'm back on track. And now it's gonna be a bit slow going because I've got quite a long bit of yarn here that I have to adjust. So usually when I make like two mistakes in a short period of time, that means I have to stop weaving because I can't, it means that I just can't concentrate enough. Um, so we'll see how many more mistakes I make in a short time frame. Might have to go take a coffee break. Normally I can weave a towel like this, the actual weaving time, maybe like somewhere between one and two hours. Um, kind of depends on the towel. And of course if it were more complicated it would take longer. There we go.
Oops, touch the camera. Yep, that camera's tricky. It's really still kind of in the way. Usually once I weave two rows of squares, I advance the warp, so I reach over and pull on the friction brake to release tension. And then advance it forward onto um, the cloth beam. Okay, that's a wrap.